gonna get stuck in your head. This song's gonna get stuck in your head. Cause it's stuck in mine. Because I just got done watching the Lego movie part two. Before I get any further into this movie review, guys, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And also comment down below and let me know what your guys' thoughts are of the Lego franchise and this new one coming out soon. Plus, you guys can also head over to Sam Sean Films down below where you get into advanced movie screenings. Lego movie part two. I was excited for it. The trailers didn't really initially get me excited too much, but knowing where it's coming off of, of the original Lego movie, which I had a blast with, and also the Lego Batman movie, which I loved, I was looking forward to what the creators were going to do with this film, and there's a lot of great things in the Lego movie part two. I will still say this, that the Lego movie part two is still awesome. But it also does some things that aren't as good as the original, which we'll get into as well. Lego Movie Part 2 takes place right after the original Lego Movie, right after Taco Tuesday happens, and those alien invaders came down, and it's really much the aftermath of that, because the whole city is now in a Mad Max apocalyptic area, which I'm a big fan of Mad Max. This is probably the closest I will ever get to a Mad Max sequel, but I'll take it. As they're living in this world, aliens come down and abduct some of our great friends from the original. It's up to Chris Pratt's character, Emmett, to go out and save them. One thing that I really did like about about this film was the world building and the mythology that they had built within this world. Again, we got some of those things from the first one, but I think the second one took it to another area and what it means to be a Lego character. And it's different to see how deep this film can get with being a Lego character, but there are some great messages to just humanity in general, to kids, to adults, and I love where they interject that. That Because this film, it makes it just not for kids, it makes it for like a whole family can go enjoy this movie. That's where I can say again, the world and the mythology that we explored in here were unique they're different the worlds they take you to different places and I love what they did and obviously I'm not gonna get into spoilers with where they go to but if you did see the original Lego movie and you saw the ending of how that film ended you can kind of guess where those worlds are going to be taking us to. I'm actually happy to see that the trailer didn't spoil too many of them. Along the way, of course, within these intergalactic worlds that we're going to, there are new characters, and one of the big standouts for me was Tiffany Haddish. Now, I'm a huge fan of Tiffany Haddish and every single thing that she does, and I was really happy to see that she was a big standout of here. Her character at first, I was like, I don't know how to feel about this, but as she kept coming on screen, I wanted a little bit more of her and her relationship that she has with our characters. Of course, Emmett, Chris Pratt, he's great. He also, Chris Pratt also voices is another character in here and he's also fantastic i don't want to give away the name you just kind of have to pick it out who it is but of course we also have elizabeth banks returning as lucy she's great she's kick-ass as always and really everyone in here comes to play again with their voices small cameos and appearances in here you're like oh is that really that person's voice or is that person's voice and i love those things of course it wouldn't be a lego movie without again like saying those great cameos but the great humor that gets interjected and intermixed within the film that is perfect for kids and adults there's a great bruce willis gag throughout the whole entire film that every time it came up I would laugh and smile and that's really what I liked about that is that there's so much great humor in there for adults and kids talking about other bits in this film there's a whole Justice League bit as well that it's it's humorous and of course when we get those it's like breaking the fourth wall and I love that because it is a Warner Brothers film so of course we're getting that Warner Brothers humor and kind of making fun of the studio in a sense and I kind of I just like when films attack their own studios because it's kind of fun. I think one thing I can really give to this film is that it just feels passion filled. It doesn't feel like a churned out animated sequel that like we had to like that. That was my big issue with Ninjago. I didn't feel like there was a lot of passion behind that film. There's some nice elements to it. It was an enjoyable film for most, but it, for me, it didn't work out because it just felt churned out. Lego Batman felt passionate. The first Lego movie felt passionate. And that's what this film feels is it's again, passionate. It's an energetic fun ride for sure. This is it's a fun ride. There are some issues that I again I did have with the film. For every great thing this film does, I there was a couple problems with it. One of my big issues with the film is it feels very long. And it's only an hour and 40 minutes, but it felt long. And I think a lot of that pacing actually has to do with not how the story is told, but is some of the sequences within the side of the story. Some of those sequences are more musical numbers. Now, this is just my personal opinion. I am not a big fan of musical numbers when they're put through a whole animated feature. Now, of course, the Lego movie did have a couple in them, but this one kind of takes it to different lengths. There's more than just a few in here. The, the whole film really... You could have turned it into a whole musical, and I get it. There are some breaking the fourth wall jokes against it with Lucy's character, but it just isn't my cup of tea when you're mixing in there. And don't get me wrong, the songs are fine and dandy, but some of them go on a little bit too long, and I could have easily snipped them out and just skipped over them for the most part. And the musical songs would come up, I'd be like, okay, let's let's get to the next part. Let's get to the next story. It's really how the Lego Movie Part Two just kind of 
interweaves and interjects itself. Hey guys, before I get to my final thoughts, make sure that like and subscribe button, comment down below what your guys' thoughts are, and also check out Sandwich on Films. Lego Movie Part 2, it's an enjoyable, energetic ride, and it's another great blast into the Lego world. I definitely want more. It again feels very passionate, and I loved what they did with the world this time. I want to explore more. I want to keep going on with these characters because I love Emmett, I love Lucy, and I love all the new protagonists that they added into here. It's an enjoyable ride again. Maybe too many musical numbers that kind of did slow down the pacing at times where it felt longer than it should have, but it's an enjoyable watch. If you got a family, if you love the Legos, if you are an adult who, again, loves Legos too or just animation in general, I can't see you being disappointed with this one. So with all that said, I'm going to give the Lego movie part two or the second part a B. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the Lego Movie Part 2. Did you guys like it? Did you hate it? Let's talk about it down below. Hey guys, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Check out Sandwich on Films. Look out for a ton of early movie reviews coming out soon, and I'll see you guys soon. Stay classy.